let's get started. You've heard about the jelly plate and you're wondering what it's all about. What is the rage? Well, I'll tell you. I have been doing jelly plates for a little bit, as I said earlier, and I'm going to show you exactly what it's all about. You don't have to necessarily buy a jelly plate. You can make your own. There's oodles of recipes online. If you Google it, they'll give you plenty of. I, I cannot vouch for it if it's good, not good. I, from what I've seen, they seem to be all right, but personally, I've never used it. But I'm going to show you how mine works. I've had this here for probably, I don't know, three, four years anyway. I've always stored it in the same container, and it's called Jelly Plates, and mine is uh, Jelly Plates Arts, gel printing, whatever. And this is what it looks like. Sorry for the noise. This is what I, I stored in its original package. And this is what it looks like. It just looks like a jello. And you remove if you, you remove the liner like this. And this is what my jelly plate looks like. And it's as good shape as it's ever been. I used to put it on this piece here for the overflow, but now that I have my glass here, I'm just going to lay it right on top. And it's all about jelly printing. What is jelly printing? You're saying, well, jelly printing is it's just a way of doing some monoprints without having a screen print in the whole nine yards. It's really fun. You make your own designs. It's, um, I don't consider it messy, I just think it's part of a craft, but it, you, it's a good way to use up your leftover paints. There's no way that you can go wrong, and the sky's the limit on what you can use it for. And um, it says, on, the, on mine anyway, it says that um, they recommend to use acrylic paints. It's not necessarily to clean the plate between prints, so I never cleaned it out afterwards, unless you desire it. Uh, paint residue can contribute to surprising and pleasing results, which is so true. You may use oil paints with the gel printing plate. We do not recommend using dyes when printing on the plate, um, because uh, spray inks or spray dyes, as the gel plate will absorb some of the dye and become permanently stained. However, stains will not affect the printing performance. So if you're fussy, don't use that, you know, because if you if if you don't like if you like to have a clean plate, I just like using um, acrylic paint, water-based paints. I never have any problem. It's easy cleanup. Acrylic paint can easily be cleaned up from the plate. I'll show you how uh, with um, either paper or you can run it under soap, uh, mild soap and water to clean it totally, and then you just uh, rinse and gently pat the printing plate with a dry paper towel. Oil paints can easily be cleaned from the gel printing plate. Rub the surface of the plate with baby oil and a wipe it clean and wash the plate with mild soap and then you're done. And um, a gel sanitizer, Purell, may be used to remove some of the paint residue on the plate. It says simply rub onto the plate surface and wipe clean with a paper towel. Baby wipe products may also be used to clean your gel printing if you're one that uses all those jelly plates. Marking your mark. It's fun to uh, make textures and they're easy to find. I'll be showing you what uh, some of them, the ones that I have. And for hand drawing marks, it's good for, uh, as long as you don't use anything pointy such as a pencil or a toothpick because they might scratch the gel plate. So it says uh, essential to know that you should store your gel printing plate in its original package, which I always have or on a smooth tray of piece of glass. So if you didn't have that, it would be, the reason for it is to keep it flat so you don't have any uh, breakage or, you know, your plate ends up wobbly or whatever. It keeps it nice and flat. Do not cover your plate with plastic wrap or wax paper. These wraps will wrinkle and imprint on your gel printing, printing plate. And this is what I meant by keeping it flat on a piece of glass. The gel printing plate is a unique plastic that contains mineral oil. 
The gel plate will leach a small amount of harmless mineral oil when left sitting on an absorbent surface. Okay, so we recommend you protect your work surface by placing your gel print place on a smooth, flat, non-porous like this. And do not place your gel printing plate directly on a surface that may absorb harmless minimal, um, mineral oil like a wooden table. But, you know, common sense says you wouldn't do that. So, you keep away from the open flames and other heat sources. It's for arts and craft only, and it is not a toy. So, let's get started. You can use any type of paint that you like, acrylic. You can use your dollar store crafty paint, or I say dollar store, Michael's, you know, Joann's, any craft store paint you can use. You can also use your basics paint, any acrylic type paint that you want. I even got these at a at a, uh, these are watercolors, artistic colors, and I bought these at a um, secondhand shop because one of the covers was broken. Well, it doesn't matter to me because it still works. So it's really up to you. And then you make your color combination of whatever you like. I'm going to show you a couple of things here that I made. I'm taking the bubbles out of underneath here. That's bubbles that are creating underneath the, um, the glass. These are some of the things that I've done. You do not only have to print on paper. These are plain white cotton napkins like this that I've purchased. Uh, they're very inexpensive. Nice size for a pillow. And uh, this is what I've used along the way. So it's very easy to use. And this is how it, com it comes out of all different types of pattern. If you can tell right here. And that's all done with my with my uh, paints. When you use it on fabric, it's good to have a conditioner. You can put a tab of uh, condition, laundry conditioner if you want it into it. What it does is, is the conditioner doesn't make the fabric so stiff. And it'll, it'll make the, the paint more pliable. Therefore, if you happen to fold it or whatever, your paint is thick, it's not going to crack. It'll go right into the fibers and work it out. This is another one that I've made. I've made pillows for my, um, for my uh, outside chairs. This one here is more bright, as you can tell. It's uh, very different, and I love it. I absolutely love it. And another one here. And these, they make really nice pillows for your chairs or anything at all. And this one here, I just tried something different. I tried it with um, trying to make a picture in the front of it. <laughs> As you can tell, it's not perfect, but it was a good experience, and I know where to go with it after this. It's a good way to practice by not costing a lot of money. See, now this is another one that I made, and these pillows sit outside. So they sit outside in the rain, and what I did is I sprayed them with the uh, water protect and they're great for outside don't cost very much and um, I added a zipper to the back and I slipped them in and slipped them off and I, I can do whatever I like with it and I really enjoy it I really really enjoy making these now that's very little um, most of my pillows are put away right now but the ones that I'm using because as you do it you you just Oh, well, I'm going to try this, and I'm going to try that. And all that becomes extremely unique, different, and your own mark on things. But what I'm going to show you is how to do it on paper, not on fabric. Because fabric is the same thing. And you can do this on scraps of papers, if you like. Or you can do it on, on plain paper. Some of the tools you're going to need is a must, I would say, is a brayer. Doesn't matter what brand or whatever, but you need a brayer to bray your, your things. Everything else should be pretty much you can get on your own. I have tons of different little things here to make different markings. I have a brush to make different markings. 
as you can see, this is a noodle. And on the noodle, this is, uh, where's the one with the noodle? See, these are the pattern. This is what I made with the noodle. I didn't print it on here. I did it on this and then run the piece on top. Holes for sticks. And I have the inserts of a, uh, of a scotch tape for circles and all kinds of stuff. I have a stamp. I've kept anything that I think might make a pattern. Now this is an ink insert and I thought oh geez that could make a nice four line you know. Plus I have also credit cards and all kinds of stuff that I can use as a playful little tool. So you're saying let's get going Yvonne. This is how it's going to go. I'm going to start with just a random type of color. It's not something that you put a lot of on. You don't have to you don't have to wet your your, uh, your things before your um, plate. You just add the paint. The colors, that's way too much. I'm going to have a lot of paint right now, but I'm going to play with it. Let's see if I can... Oops, I guess this one here is almost empty. Did not know that. Well, let's try another one. Why fight with it? Oh, let's try this pretty aqua. Or light blue, I should say, not aqua. Okay. So, with this in mind, I think I'm just going to push it a little bit around because that's way too much. You should need maybe something like that or something like that at the most. And all I'm going to do is roll it. Roll it and roll it. Now, you can go either way you want. I, I don't know if you can see the colors. The more you roll it, the more it's going to mix. So I kind of like this, but I want to make some images. So this was like a block uh, 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 when I took my stamps apart and made them all um, polymer or whatever you call it. So I just glued in some um, cardstock, uh, some um, corrugated cart forms and whatever and I can just do this so I can do my own batik fabric or forms see how pretty that is and then you just take a piece of paper or fabric in this case lay it on top Rub it nice and smooth. You don't have to press with all your might. You just make sure that all the paper is absorbed into the paint. Like this. And the navy blue came out of it. And I don't know if you can see it, but you can see all the Oh, you can't see too much on camera, but you can see it quite well on the piece. Let me see if I can get it to... Yeah, you can see a little bit, but you can see much, much better without... Uh, on its own. Now, you think this is a waste? It is not a waste. You just add another piece of paper and you're going to have like a ghost of what you just did. And you can reuse this. I've done this, I've used, I've let them dry, and I've used them in journals, I've used them in making cards. I know some of you even received some of my cards with some of my papers. And this is not a waste. This is going to be saved to use up with something else. So let's continue. I'm going to try different colors. Let me try this one. A little bit of a Christmas green there, I guess. Let's try a little purple. I still put too much, way too much. Never need that much. But that's how I operate, I guess, sometimes. And it's not necessarily all that good. So what you do with your roller once you're done is I always have a piece of paper. Now you can use it with a piece of uh, paper towel if you like. But the paper that I just came off of it, I will rub it on here. And then it cleans out my burr. So now I'm just going to 
start again. And you could do some, um, if you wanted to, take some paint off. You could do some, um, I forget what the, the technical name is for it, when you have different colors that, um, that run into one another. I don't know if some of you guys do that, but you get on camera and you forget all the the the, uh, the the right terms for the names of things. I am totally so bad, so bad. But but I don't burn too much energy off that. I think you guys know what I mean. And I want to go into my green here. Yeah, this is pretty. This is real pretty. Now, I like that. So I could take this brush and I could roll it on top and it gives it a texture. See how it's the texture? It gives it all the different types of texture that you want. This is what I mean about using your tools. And everybody knows what this is. You had, this is to dust your blind, the mini blinds that they had. I kept, I kept the machine, the thing. I took the feathers out, but I kept the, because I think it it can be used. I could make some waves. I can make some lines. And if I don't like how it comes out, you know what I can do? I know you're all answering me before I'm able to to say it. Yes, you just go back over it. Okay. Now. I'm going to show you a little bit of what can be done, how it's going to come out. Let us see. Get my paper out here. There you go. Let's try this. This is going to be dark, and we'll try a very light one after. this. Look at this. Can you see this? This is so stinking cute. This this is really pretty. I know it's dark, but I like dark colors. So this is this is going to be a taker for me for sure, for sure. And uh, and all you do to clean it up afterwards, you don't have to do anything fancy. You just need to uh, Take a piece of paper, like I showed you a few minutes ago. I mean, if you're really fussy, take a, um, you can take a wet one. Let me show you. I have wet ones right here. Or a wet cloth, I should say. It doesn't necessarily have to be a wet one. But you can buy these so inexpensive. You can just wipe it off. But I, I think this is the first time I do it. I never wipe it this way. I always just tap it with a piece of paper, and, and that is it. See how easy that is? So, let's say I want to do some bright colors, because I'm going to put some orange, just a tad, and I'm going to put a bit of yellow. Let me see the yellow here. I, like, I really like this uh, particular yellow. I'm going to add a little bit of yellow. Then, they always say less is best, because you can always add more. I am totally not that avenue. I'm totally always adding more. This one here, I have more. I am going to have to do some cleanup of my paints here. Let's try. Oh, no. I did my, oh, this is the blue that I enjoy. I really like this cobalt blue. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Brand new tube, guys. Brand new tube. And that I'm going to take some off because there's going to be way too much. That's wasted. That's wasted. Okay, so let me... You really don't need all that much. As you can tell, the little bit that I've put there, see how it's going through? Now this may be even a little too light.
but it's better to put it light than put it too dark because light you can add, dark you cannot. So I'm going to add some more yellow. Kind of, now the yellow here, as you know, if, you're, if you know your colors, I'm going to add a little bit of yellow and the yellow is going to turn into a green here. So it's going to do gradient is the word I was trying to find a while ago. That everybody was screaming out. I could hear you guys. Gradient, gradient, you want gradient. <laughs> there. You can tell the blue is turning into the green. See how pretty that is? That's very nice and gradient. Now on, on my screen here, you may not see the actual color, true, true color, but um, it's coming out really, really nice. Oops, way too much again. yellow just because I put too much on this side again way too much but it's not when I say way too much it depends on what you're doing um, way too much is might be too much for you may not be too much for me but um, it comes out really really nice now, if you find your paint would be getting dry, another thing you can do is you can spritz it like that. Then it'll become quite wet, and, and then you can run it back like so. So, I've done that, and I just want to show you, you can purchase these, but if you have credit cards, like credit cards you're not using anymore, may it be, you know, music cards or whatever, you can cut it. If you have pinking shears or anything like that, you can make your own designs on your cards and it will make whatever design that you want to make. So let's say it, let's say I'm going to use this one here and I wanted to just make a just a typical line like this. This will bring me right down to the gel plate. Okay? Just wipe that off. You don't have to do anything more than that. I'm just going to show you a few so you have an idea of what I mean. Now, these here come from Rangers. You can buy them from Rangers. Rangers is a little different. But now, with our machines and everything you can cut with your machines, uh, like the cry cut or the uh, scan and cut the silhouette on to make your stencils, you could use it to uh, cut pieces and make your own. And this one here, it shows you um, let me see, right here, it shows you the design that it'll make, so you know ahead of time if you're the kind of person that needs to know before you start adding texture to it. See how pretty that is? I love it, love it, love it, love it. I can do this for hours on end, and then I stack my paper, put it away once it's dry. It dries fairly quick, but um, I love to keep it dry. Now, if you don't like the paint on your hands, it's just water-based paint. It's going to come off. Feel free to use some uh, rubber gloves. I don't. I can clean off with water and soap. It'll come off. And look how pretty that is. That is super nice. And once it dries, it just it does make makes really pretty, pretty, pretty things. You can. Because you're not going to use it as a full sheet. You're going to use it to, um, you're probably going to cut it out. And uh, it's going to be super nice. Using the remainder of the paint here, I can do a ghost painting from this. And That's normally how I, I used to do it. Now that's coming back to my mind. I haven't done this for a while. But it's fun. I can see now why, why I stopped. And I'm wondering why did I stop. So let's say I'm leaving all these just like that. And I just add it on. I can just add it on top. Rub it really, really good. 
pull it out and I have this. See the difference? I can see some of the patterns from the last one, some of the dots where I put the paint. I don't know if you can see that. See where I added the paint just by dot and I just lightly ran over it. And my, my thing is almost all dry. So basically what I'm saying is you can put your paint as thick as you want or as light as you want and you will do the same thing if you have fabric you will do the same thing you'll rub it on that's how I ended up having these waves and then I did these four I just did it on the corner but as far as every other piece of fabric I just blotted it on and made my fabric it makes a boutique type of uh, paper I guess is what I'm saying and you can do anything how many times you know mermaids are in and you would have liked to have something with lots of um, bluish color and you would really like to make like a, a scenery so you'd like to have some dark blue on the top and you'd like to have I'm just showing you for ideas because you might be wondering well, why, why would I use that you know I can buy the paper or whatever but let's say you have your paints at home and, and this is you know, you just want to kind of make a paint color that will go with your um, your theme. All you do is you would just mix. See how the gradient comes in? It's coming through. And then when I would get at this point, I would definitely take some off. And then I would come back and roll it through and make my way up because if I go all the way up what's going to happen you're going to end up having a line just like I just did right there that's not what you're looking for you're looking for a gradient look and that's what I want so I'm going to just work it through Beautiful, 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 beautiful. Now if you wanted more blues, more light blue, dark blue, you can see the blue there. All I need is just put another dot, just run it through. Skies with clouds are not necessarily always like exact. And just work your way down. And the colors that I've used here for some of you who might be looking, I'm looking at the primary blue for the darker color, then I looked at the light blue permanent for the middle color, and the other color is aqua green that I used for the bottom. And if I put those all those together, let me get another sheet of paper, guys. And this is just copy paper I'm using, not cardstock, by the way, just regular copy paper. And if I had misprints on, on copy paper, you know how sometimes you print out, oh geez, you know, it's not what I want or whatever, use the other side. Because you're going to glue it on and if I had typos here or whatever, it wouldn't show because it's going to be, it's going to be on. Now look at this, if you don't think this is pretty. From this, I can work my way and make this a scenery with clouds with all kinds of stuff. I could have even put some white on there and make it as clouds. See how pretty that is? Now, you may be wondering, well, why doesn't she go direct on paper? Paint on paper, go direct. Well, I'll tell you why. It doesn't give the same effect. Not at all. This is direct to paper, and it doesn't do the same thing. Um, let me see. Paper is just, let me, let me just do this side. Just just to show you guys. It won't mix the same because it's not, the gel gives it the cushion that it needs to kind of um, keep the paint on top and not leave, let it absorb into the paper because there's no paper until you transfer it. Which this here will, the, the um, it will run into the paper and will not blend the way it should. See? how it's blotting it's not giving you and and you can't play with the paper so 
let's say I wanted to do something. See how it's bloody all up here? Let's say the paint's starting to dry already because it's going into the fibers and I want it to wet it. It doesn't do it. It just doesn't. Because this, these blots and so forth and here too, they've already absorbed into the paper and there's nothing you can do about it. There's absolutely nothing you can do to change that. So it's a much, much better if you use the gel. It's so unique. With this here, I wouldn't be able to make a texture. It won't work. Um, I wouldn't be able to use my sponge. Now, if this was on, on the uh, gel plate itself, I'd be doing this at this point, and I'd have all these little circles. It won't work that way. So the gel plate is very, very useful. Now, in closing, you can buy, um, when in the time that I purchased mine, you could only get the very large one, and I think there was a couple of other square ones, but you couldn't buy different shapes. Now they have so many different shapes. They have round shapes, octagon shapes, uh, all kinds of shapes. So you don't, don't necessarily have to uh, cut it out after. Now, personally, I have all kinds of dyes, so if I have a paper like this and I want to cut out a piece, I just put my dye on there and I cut it. But if I had a round gel plate, and it'll give you the size, either 10 inches or 5 inches or whatever, and I just do that one and I then imprint on my paper or cardstock, because you can imprint on cardstock, it'll only do that circle that'll make another effect. I have yet to need that. I'm not saying it's not usable. It's like any tool. If you get one, you know if you're an avid crafter that you can just about do everything else with it. You just got to think outside the box. But for some people that like to have a shape of everything, then it makes it a little bit more convenient to have all the other pieces. So it's up to you. I would recommend, if you're not sure if you're going to like it, get the smaller one and then work with that. But if it's something that you think you're going to like, because if you're a paper crafter, if you're a quilter, if you're a sewer, this is very nice because you can make quilts and batiks for a fraction of the cost that you can buy it. You can, I mean, if you're, if you're a stuffed animal maker, you can make them in the Easter colors, in the Valentine colors. You can make them in anything. If you're a card maker, I mean, it's wide open, right? Because, I mean, any I'm using acrylic paints like that, but there's nothing stopping me from using my ink pads, per se, because they're water-based. As long as they're water-based, you're fine. And there, there are so many things that you can do with this gel pad. And the sky's the limit. And I'm going to tell you, if you're really, really fussy, no, I shouldn't say that like that because everybody's different. Cut a hole in your paper. Well, I don't have one here, but cut a hole in your paper with, a, with one of your dies. Lay it on top. Put the paint where the hole is. Splatter your paint. When you pull it out, your paper will have been used at like a stencil. Then add your cardstock. You'll still have that circle and you won't have invested another $10 for a piece of gel that's round. There's so many ways. Add your stencil on top, roll your paint on top of the stencil, bring it out. You have a whole new line of designs. I have some that I've done here. I know I've seen it. Or is it on my other papers? Uh, I'm trying to think where did I. I may have, no, I think I, I did it, but just if you use a stencil, it, it's going to work the same as if you use it on paper. The sky's the limit. Anyway, I hope you've enjoyed this little tutorial. Don't forget that I'm using the jelly, by, the jelly plate by Jelly Arts. They're very, there's quite a few different brands out there. I don't think one brand's any different than another, but it's a lot of fun. If you don't have a roller, worry not just get a you can go to the dollar store and get the pastry roller in plastic you know uh, use that you know the only thing you may have a ridge on it or something but please
play with it. The sky's the limit. You don't have to pay fifteen or twenty dollars for a roller blade. You can. There's all kinds of different types, but that's the idea. Is use your imagination. It's the gel plate that does the magic, and the magic can be costly. Well, not costly, but it can cost you money. Or you can do it with ingredients you have in your house. This is Yvonne. And this is another short tutorial. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope it inspired you to try something different and expand what you know already and just put it all on paper. We'll be back with another tutorial. All in all, just make yourself happy at whatever it is that you do. Have a great day. Bye-bye.